And so these investments, they come after a bit of post-Cold War atrophy, I guess you could call it, um, in tech and techniques, and that's including in the Army, the Air Force, the other services. Should these investments or should the, should this problem have been recognized sooner and should these investments have been made, you know, closer to when they were recognized or are we behind the ball? Are we right where we need to be? Yeah, I think that's a that's a challenging um, um, question to answer, right? Should we have been investing in electronic warfare prior? We have been investing in electronic warfare. Uh, all, all of our counter IED capabilities that were in Afghanistan and Iraq were, were electronic warfare capabilities, right? So uh, we have certainly um, changed what we were focused on in terms of protecting forces uh, and in terms of the technology of electronic warfare. I think now our, our focus on investment in electronic warfare was building sort of windows of operation in spectrum, which is very different than going after IEDs or going after protection of uh, um, uh, a ground combat force or a, or a patrol. So I think we've been investing in electronic warfare. I think our investments now are very different as we get go to a multi-domain operations fight. Um, you also mentioned Bindo PACOM, right? What is the Army's role in these, in these vast sort of uh, distances, right? And is the Army really going to deliver tactical electronic warfare in that, in that domain? Uh, maybe. I think those are some of the investments that we're looking at is how can we get that long-range effect? Uh, I also think that our foundational investment in understanding the data environment, right? Pulling data from the Intel community, pulling data from the Navy who may be operating in Indo-PACOM, being able to provide our commanders um, sort of that insight of the environment is, is absolutely critical. And I think, um, I, I, I think that is, uh, I think those investments are sort of unique electronic warfare investments to the Army. I, I wouldn't say we are necessarily right where we need to be. I think we are a little bit behind in our electronic warfare investments uh, when it comes to Indo-PACOM, when it comes to long range effects. Uh, but we got some very positive momentum in our terrestrial layer system for the brigade and our terrestrial layer system for echelons above brigade. And so I, I, I'm hopeful uh, and I'm very focused on delivering those capabilities here in the near future come. So you mentioned Titan and you mentioned TLS, so I'd like to stay on those points. Maybe we can start with Titan, which is the Tactical Intelligence Targeting Access Node. Do you have an update on that project and maybe more specifically, what progress are you seeing with those Raytheon and Palantir prototypes? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, uh, thank, thank you for asking. Right, And, and again, we see that as a foundational JADC2 investment for, our, uh, for the Army, right? And how we're gonna deliver a capability to the joint services is through our Titan capability. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, right now we're in a competitive prototype phase with Raytheon and Palantir. Uh, in fact, both companies are delivering capability to Hunter Army Airfield uh, outside of Savannah, Georgia, uh, where we have soldiers from across the army doing a soldier touch point on both of their capabilities. Uh, and so we're actually leveraging soldier input in how we're gonna define the future of that capability and how we're gonna go through a contractual down select uh, to get after uh, um, the capability that will define the future of our army. And so, so we're really excited to have soldiers involved in that. Uh, through the summer, we will go through a developmental test of the prototypes, uh, running three real world scenarios, uh, leveraging uh, um, both manned ISR, uh, um, overhead ISR and ground-based ISR uh, leveraging joint service uh, technologies uh, in order to build uh, confidence that we're selecting the right prototype uh, to move forward into a production situation for our Titan capability. I uh, so really excited about that. I also wanted to mention that uh, we built a prototype for first MDTF uh, to go after space-based capability. We call it our Titan pre-prototype. Uh, that recently deployed with first MDTF out to the Philippines and uh, is actually helping support first MDTF and their operations in Indo-PACOM. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of progress in the Titan program. Uh, however, a lot of work to be done uh, as we get to sort of the summer, uh, getting through this developmental test environment and, and building out the first real prototypes of Titan. Uh, so thanks, thanks for that question, Colin. Appreciate the opportunity to highlight. And I, and I would sort of amplify that the way we've structured the Titan program it is not the last opportunity for industry to deliver capability to Titan. Uh, we have a dual pathway, so it is a software acquisition pathway and a, and a major uh, military acquisition. And our commitment is to integrate yearly capability into our software acquisition capability uh, for Titan. 
And so for our industry partners that are out there on Titan that see this competition evolving, uh, there will be significant on ramps uh, for our Titan program for the future of our, uh, of our Titan capability. Cause we have got to adapt to the future threat. We've got to adapt to the future environment. Uh, we can't go through a, you know, cookie cutter production uh, environment for our Titan capability. So thanks for letting me highlight that Colin. For sure. So you and other officials have said Titan is, you know, a, a keystone in the Army's JADC2 approach. I'm curious how so maybe you could explain to our viewers what makes it so special, what it's actually doing and how soldiers will down the road be using it. Yeah, I, I think it would be insightful. So today we fly manned ISR or unmanned ISR with dedicated ground links and ded dedicated, uh, um, um, a dedicated infrastructure, right? Their own database, their own data store, their own way to interact the data with the network, their own way to interoperate with uh, our counterpart ISR or counterpart platforms. Uh, and that, that makes integration of data really complicated. It also puts a large onus on the analyst to find data, to, to, to do cognitive integration of data, uh, to understand, hey, if, if the Air Force is flying a rivet joint, I gotta go find that data somewhere, right? It, it, it does not just come to me in a meaningful way. Uh, and so the concept, of, at a very simplistic way, the concept of Titan is to really build a capability that can ingest any sensor data, right? Organic to a unit or not, whether that's a Air Force ISR capability, whether that's a, a weather station, you name it, the, the, the uh, data source or the data type, uh, Titan should integrate to that data source and provide the analyst the ability to uh, integrate that data, visualize that data, and provide the commander with a meaningful assessment or a meaningful answer to the question. Uh, it is also, Titan is also foundational to our long range precision fires and sensor to shooter architectures. So when we are collecting and we are developing targets, we wanna be able to use every data source available to us. And so being able to aggregate that data in a meaningful way in one place is really critical for why we think the joint services are going to really leverage uh, Titan and why the Army sees Titan as a foundational investment to JADC2. And so collecting, kind of analyzing and dispersing that information, that's really going to rely on artificial intelligence or some, side of, some sort of pattern recognition, correct? Yeah, and I think artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, our ability to build new visualization techniques, uh, simple things like being able to start up and troubleshoot our ground station in a really meaningful way that soldiers can interact with. Uh, these are the important things that we're hearing from soldiers when we do these soldier touch points on Titan. And we've got to then incorporate that uh, with our industry partners from Raytheon and Palantir uh, to be able to build a meaningful capability. So absolutely, Colin, yeah.